Hey everyone, welcome to the eighth video in our series on the reactions of chapter eight. So in this video, we're gonna be covering three reactions that all do basically the exact same thing, okay? Uh, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about uh, addition of carbenes, carbenes addition of carbenes um so these re all these reactions the enantiomer is also formed and the only other thing to mention about these is that their sin addition kind of it's kind of a weird caveat, but I would call them sin addition. I would describe them as sin addition. You'll see what I mean. So like I said, there's three reactions that we're gonna be talking about in this video. Uh, we're not gonna do the mechanism for any of them, but uh, we will still talk about all three of them regardless. Um, so whenever we do these reactions, we need to pay attention to which reagents we're actually being given so that way we know what kind of carbene we're making. Okay, so some caveats here, but should be fine. Okay, so the first one we're gonna talk about is diazomethane. So diazomethane. Okay, so diazomethane is CH2N2. Okay, so let's say that I take this alkene and I put in CH2N2. And then I use UV light. I can use UV light or I can use heat. Okay, UV light or heat, doesn't matter, okay? And what this does, what all of these carbene reactions are going to do is add a carbene. So what's a carbene? A carbene is a CH2 group. So I'm adding a CH2. So if I add a CH2 where the double bond was, then where the double bond was, I draw, I draw a cyclopropene. Okay, so every single one of these are going to add a CH2, which forms a propene. Okay, so we, we're literally just drawing a triangle where the double bond was, okay? That's it, okay? So that's what this first one does, just like this. Um, and then we can do another example like this. So if we do this one, and then we do CH2N2 with heat, then this is why I say this is sin addition, <clears throat> because we get obviously in order to form this triangle, they, the two bonds had to form at the same, at the same face, right? So I can get uh, both bonds on a wedge or I can get both bonds on a dash. So I get both enantiomers as well. Okay, so I get both of these. And the reason I didn't draw it here is because this isn't chiral, right? or at least one of the carbons and it's not chiral. So we just avoid drawing it. We're not worried about it. So <clears throat> here we're forming two chiral centers. So we need to, we need to be specific about what's going on. Okay. Uh, the last thing that I will say about carbenes and this one as well is that, and this is going to apply to every reaction that we do. Um, whatever the starting material looks like. So you'll see that these two methyl groups are trans, right? In the carbene, the methyl groups still need to be trans. The methyl groups still need to be trans in the carbene, okay? They have to be. So this is the only other thing that I wanted to mention. And I'll do some more examples like this with the next uh, form of carbene synthesis which is Simmons-Smith. Okay, so Simmons-Smith carbene synthesis. So uh, this one is gonna form the same product as the diazomethane method does. 
the only difference being that uh, the reagents are different, okay? So let's start off with the same one that we started off with over there with diazomethane. And this time we're going to use CH2, I2 with zinc and copper. This is a zinc copper amalgam. And then usually we use ether. So, so ether could be diethyl ether, dimethyl ether, uh, something like that. Okay, so we use we use some kind of ether. All right. So again, this is going to form the same thing. That's it. Okay. So everything that applied to this last reaction applies to this one. The reagents are just different. It's just a different way to do it. Okay. So now I'm going to look at a if I had this, if this was cis. Okay, so if I have a cis alkene and I do this with it. So Zn, Cu, and then let's use diethyl ether. So Et2O, that's diethyl ether. And then, so I'm gonna form a carbene and it's going to be, that's not cis, sorry. And it's going to be cis, okay? So, and th this has a mirror plane, so I'm not gonna draw it on a dash because this is miso, but um, this is what it would look like if it was cis because both these methyls are on the same side. So in the ring, they're gonna both be on the same side as well. Okay, so that never, that doesn't change. And then if I did this exact same thing with this one, right? Like if I did the same reaction here with this one, So we use these reagents instead. We get the same thing as with diazomethane, no difference. So exactly the same as diazomethane. Okay. So like I said, these do the same thing, just different reagents. Okay, so let's talk about one more. And this one's gonna be slightly different. Okay, there's gonna be a bit of a difference here, but this one is gonna be alpha elimination. This is still carbene synthesis, it's just alpha elimination now, okay? So let's start off with the same thing that we started off with last time. And then the only difference is that on top, we're gonna to be using a, a haliform. Okay, so a haliform is something like chloroform, bromoform, iodoform, okay, something like that. And what that does, or what that looks like rather, is C, H, and then if it's a bromoform, then it's Br3. Chloroform is CHCl3. Okay, and then on bottom, we uh, usually have a base such as KOH or NaOH and water. So now, slight difference here. So I still form the triangle, that's the same. The only difference is that at the end of the triangle, whatever my haliform is, so in this case, I have a bromoform, at the end of the triangle, I put two bromines. That's it. Okay, so again, uh, if we did something like this trans alkene, so this alkene's trans, right? And then we do a CHCl3 with KOH and water. Then uh, in our ring, whenever we form the ring, that's gonna continue to be trans, right? And then my ring, is a cyclopropene with two now chlorines on it, right? Because I used chloroform instead of bromoform. All right. So that's it for this one. Okay. So as far as carbene synthesis goes, I have alpha elimination, Simmons Smith, 
and diazomethane. Okay, so those are my three important ones that I need to know. And <clears throat> remember that diazomethane and Simmons Smith do the same thing, they just have different reagents. And then alpha elimination does almost the same thing, except I add a dihalide on the tip of the cyclopropene. Okay, so that's it. Um, hopefully, this was helpful. And in the next video, I think we're going to be talking about syn dihydroxylation with coal potassium permanganate and osmium tetroxide. So I think the next video is going to be a pretty simple uh, video as well. So hopefully this was helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.